The today's entry into increasingly less occasional scene are the animes whose defining feature is that they certainly are an anime, alright? If shit like this is going to become the norm past COVID, I can already feel myself breezing through the seasons like a new sports car on an average Eastern European road. So let's start with I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level, besides a name that is great to repeat to pad the episode, is a 12 episode anime whose plot is very simple. A typical Japanese office worker named Asusa Aizawa died from overworking so the clearly perverted goddess reincarnated her in a fantasy world as an immortal witch. Because of that she decided to do basically nothing for the next 300 years until word came by that she maxed out her level and then she slowly creates a family for herself and she is really protective about them and like them. That is really it. I think the most entertaining thing about the premise is that people liked it so much it spawned four spin-offs. So yes, I don't even really know how to classify this anime. Wikipedia and I guess other sites will say that it's an isekai because of, you know, a Japanese person reincarnating in a world and I kinda want to agree because a large part of Asusa's character is to make sure nobody overworks. At the same time, the first episode had barely gotten to the half mark and the reincarnating part is barely if ever then mentioned again. And besides that, the show fits into the slice of life formula more, mainly those slices of life where pretty much nothing happens throughout the entirety of the show, and that's basically the point of it. Let's return to the part where I explain the plot. It's a slow and cute story about a cute Japanese girl that has escaped the confines of this reality and got transported into another reality while having all the time in the world to relax, build up and adopt a family for herself made out of nothing but cute girls that love her. If while even once during hearing this you've thought something among the lines of man she is lucky or I wish that was me then congratulations you're the show's target audience and that's honestly nothing to be ashamed of after all the ultimate goal of the isekai genre is escapism in whatever way it may manifest there's not much else for the show otherwise though and people who aren't expecting just 12 episodes of nothing happening will be strongly disappointed though what the fuck were they expecting from a show called I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level as anyone's guess so our second anime is after being rejected I shave and took in a high school runaway, a 13 episode thing that Wikipedia describes as a Japanese romantic comedy light novel series, which honestly speaking made me feel very old. Here's why. The story begins with a person named Yoshida, a typical office worker that got rejected by his boss, or at least I think that's his boss, so he gets drunk, sees a lone high schooler sitting on the ground and in his drunken wisdom decides to basically adopt her. After that the story turns into a character exploration of a hopeless, depressed girl that ran away from her oppressive mother in Hokkaido to Tokyo that hates herself so much she started to seduce men to let her stay in their houses for a couple of nights and feel as if she is needed for something, only for Yoshida she had to come into her life and slowly nurse her back to a semblance of normalcy. Apparently this is considered comedic now. Am I really that old? Has the Overton window shifted so much that something like Hamlet or The Sorrows of Young Werther should be considered a romantic comedy now? What would be deemed a horror story then? That the convenience store was closed at 5am when the main hero wanted some chicken nuggies. Anyway, after Yoshida shelters this girl, his co-worker and his boss also fall in love with him and that's pretty much it, really. It's kinda boring in that way. Oh, don't get me wrong, on a technical and storytelling level it's not bad, far from it. It's a decently made romantic anime, random graphics quality drop in the last three episodes notwithstanding that if you like these sorts of shows it's actually fairly entertaining to watch, it doesn't have too big of a cast and everyone is endearing enough to be interesting. The problem is that, on the whole, the show is predictably by the numbers and shallow. It's good, but it's deliberately made that way in a factory, with very little new stuff added into there. The viewing experience is to just systematically listen to all the individual but painfully obvious scenes in turn, and once you've listened to enough of it, it's fairly obvious as to where the story goes. The characters are quirky, but also a bit one-sided. There's always a part where they meet the girl in question and then get all awed by the amazing cuteness of her like she's the fucking hypnotoad. I didn't get much intellectual challenge of this anime, is me point. It felt more like the type of anime you're supposed to turn your brain off and enjoy the romantic cuteness of it, but because I'm a spiteful bastard, what I felt instead were boredom and that feeling when your brain tells you you're falling even though you're sitting perfectly still on a couch. But it's harmless enough fun, and as I've said before, people who are into this sort of thing will get their fix just fine. For me it was about as predictable as watching a documentary about air. Mm. 